All right, this video is going to be talking about on the MEP 802 and 803 Alpha military surplus generators and the two tank well nuts and upgrades for them. This is what comes on the generators usually. Uh, sometimes the black rubber piece here will be gray. And basically, there is a like fused in metal nut. You push this in tighten it and it kind of wedges itself into the two holes. I have a tank removed here and this is the one that's in the top. When you remove the back cover where your fill would be and then there's also the one that ends up being the culprit that leaks and is really hard to change that's kind of inside where your uh, oil fill door is and stuff. This brass piece right here is the one for quite a long time that has been recommended to change out and it's it really is a great fitting um, it comes with a viton gasket um, and it has the little ribs on it i put this on my very first one and i've used it in other instances and i want to say roughly i end up paying like 35 to 40 bucks because the shipping ends up being a lot on them and then it seems that the manufacturer for these is really inconsistent. Um, so you end up needing to put it on back order and wait a while, at least that was my experience. And even though this is a really good fitting, I don't think that was like a great, I think it was a little bit too much for, for the cost. So I did a whole bunch of research and I decided that I'm gonna start offering this kit for sale. I'm gonna sell them as a pair because if you're gonna do one, you might as well do both. It's brass. And this is a Viton O-ring. And there is a little, excuse my dirty hands because I've been working on the generator and trying to do this one handed. But there's a little spot on the fitting that holds that in place, the O-ring, so it won't really move on you. And it's a nice thick O-ring. So that way, if you have a little bit of damage from trying to remove this fitting, because these can get really nasty and get hard to get out to make up for some of the imperfections. And then it's got extra length. And then when you put it on, this serrated washer helps hold this into place. And Viton is the proper material that should be used for diesels and oils. I sell them in a pair on my eBay store and there's a link in the description for about what it is to purchase one of these. And I have Basically, you're going to keep them in stock indefinitely. They're not going to be back ordered. Um, it took me quite a while to find a place, a supplier, to get them reasonably. I buy them in bulk to get them cheaper. Like I said, finding the distributor that had the little rib, and then these ones are slightly longer. Yeah, so now what I'm going to show you is some tips on installing them. I am going to recommend, I'll show you after this, something you could do to try to install it without completely ripping a generator apart like I have here. This looks way worse than what it is. And I highly recommend if you're doing this, you might as well replace your fuel return lines at this point and upgrade your brass tees, which I also offer those two things on my store too, because that way you can do them neatly and all that stuff. Uh, this ends up being pretty self-explanatory to be able to just basically unbolt this piece and there's enough room where you can leave the shroud in place and just kind of shift it up and forward because on the 802, the fuel tank has like this one inch dip and you have to get the tank up and out. You also will need to loosen this nut and get it up and out of the way. And I left the tank out to be able to show this. So from the inside, you can see poor lighting here. I'm sorry, I'll show you from the other side, but there's two uh, 5 16 bolts that are facing inboard. And then you have some 3 8 going this way. You have the 9 16 that hold the uh, lifting clevis on each side. Same thing going this way. You can see them a little bit better, the 5 16ths over there. Obviously, you remove this back panel. 
when you're looking at it here from the top, I'm not going to be able to stick the camera in here that great, but you have that hole, that hole, and then that oblong hole screw needs to come out. Then this one and this one as well. These four that are up closer are for removing the fill spout. Then you also need to remove the hose clamp that goes around this so you can slide that whole piece off. And there is a hose fitting. I tucked it up behind. That's gonna need to come off the back side of that too. Then you have these two angled brackets. <clears throat> that is what these oblong fittings are. So there's one set oblong holes, not fittings, that are inside the opening where the radiator feeds from, but then they're also in here. Same on the other side. Then you need to go along and do all the ones that are along the bottom here. And in right here are those 5 sixteenths that I was talking about. These are probably the easiest ones to miss because they're hard to even notice that they're there. And then lift it up. And like you could see, I just kind of got a two by four and that holds it up enough in a way. So that way you can wrestle it out. Um, the reason why I recommend just removing the tank to do it is the other method because this hole that they give for the fitting you're never going to be able to really get the nut on there and tighten it down because there's no room to get a wrench on there tighten it down enough and then if the tank isn't positioned properly the nut is going to end up grabbing on the lip right there and it's not going to seat properly um, you might get lucky and be able to do it that way. But honestly, with getting these older generators and needing to do some of the other stuff that needs to be done, you're better off just taking this apart and doing it this way. With the tank out, it makes it much easier. That way you can fully clean your tank. And you can see I have the two fittings installed on here and you can make sure they get tight because once it's clean and it's drier, you can replace your gaskets on here as well. And with it off, you can actually get your arm in here if you want to and hold it and make sure that they're tightened down. The fittings that I'm selling, th these were one of the, a, a pair of, that I bought kind of when I was trying to figure out. These are a little bit shorter. So the ones you will get will actually be a little bit longer. Um, I just didn't want these to go to waste. So I'm using them on mine just so they're not going to go to waste. But the ones you get will be longer. Taking the top cover off is pretty self-explanatory. And then taking this air box and the muffler off, again, self-explanatory, uh, not really that hard to do. Just slow and steady, take your time, get it out of the way. It makes everything much easier to go through and inspect stuff, clean it up. So I'll show you the other method now, if you wanted to try doing it that way. All right, so I'm gonna show uh, what I've found to be the best way to install one of these without actually removing anything. Um, so if you have the one in here removed, uh, use a scrap piece of wire, feed it in. And then I have a like claw reacher tool and use like a flashlight, find it, pull it out. And then with the nut and the bite and washer removed, make sure you have your O-ring on there and then feed the wire in. Uh, you can pre-install your AN fitting. Uh, for my purposes, I'm doing something else on this particular generator, so it's not an AN fitting, but you can pre-install that and then run it up and twist it a little bit around so it'll hold it on. But not enough where it's gonna be super tight. If you have a second person to help you, could make it a little bit easier, but basically, Start pulling the slack out and pull it through and reach with your hand at the same time to help it through as much as possible because the wire probably went through where some of the float switches and things are. 
and then gently pull it through. You'll feel it kind of come across the bottom. It may run in. And then when you see it start to come through, that's when you're going to undo the twist in the wire. And then pull on it a little bit harder and help then the loose piece of the wire come out. And grab on to the new brass fitting at the same time and work the wire free. Pull it through and then pull the wire all the way out. Then put your washer and nut on and start working it all tight. And that's sort of a battle in its own here because getting onto the nut uh, with a big wrench in this tight space is not that easy. Uh, part of the reason why pre-installing the fitting is good, because if that's nice and tight, you can use that and turn it. This fitting, similar to the old school type, really does not need to be that tight. So you want it to be basically just tight enough so it's not leaking, then go a little bit more. Uh, these are gonna be a little bit more robust, but you basically don't wanna squeeze it enough to mess up. I'm not gonna go through and show you the whole thing of getting it on here, but that's how to feed it through. And you can do the same thing for the one that will be installed right here. Same idea is feed it through with some wire. The only difference here is you're not really going to be able to pre-install that fitting because it's a larger T. It's not going to fit through that hole. So you'll have to install it afterwards when you get it through. Hopefully that was helpful for you. It's not the easiest task in the world. It's annoying. This generator here has the new fittings installed. You can see, see how much longer it is sticking out. And yes, it is wet down there. No, the tank is not leaking at the fitting. It's just wet from when I was doing all the work. The diesel does not dry up very well. Then I have my fuel line kit ready to go. And this is just all the stuff staged, ready to get reinstalled on this. I think this is a worthwhile upgrade. Um, I've already sold a whole bunch of them before making this video. Come, like I said, I'm selling them in a two pack. Everything's fresh, hasn't been sitting around for a while, proper O-rings. Uh, link in the description to the eBay store. Hopefully these tips were helpful. And uh, it's kind of a do it once and you'll never need to worry about your tank leaking again, like the rubber fittings.